So let's get back to getting acquainted. Thank you very much for waiting. So yeah, this is me. This is me doing basically the same talk, but with working clicker. And uh, this is our today's talk. Sorry, not, not this slide. Come on. Yes, this is our today's topic, yes, modules. Uh, for those who don't know, I see a few hands wasn't raised. So ES modules is a JavaScript module system that was developed by TC39, for those who don't know. TC39 is a program committee which develops a new JavaScript standards and it was released as a part of ES6 standards way back in 2015, but I haven't seen too much talks on this on the web, so I decided to make my own. Uh, so, okay, uh, one of the main things um, that you should consider while building a web application is a bundle size. Uh, you might notice that uh, this is the second talk selling uh, optimization, uh, like. Uh, on this uh, meetup, so this might be important. And why is the reason is that the less your bundle size is, uh, the faster your site loads, the less impact it has on like uh, user battery, especially if it's a mobile device, like smartphone, like more than a half of web users now is a smartphone users. Uh, also the higher it ranks in uh, search engines because one of the main uh, of the main uh, Google Google characteristics for ranking your site is a Google performance measurement and uh, this is actually a picture to show your boss if you're going to sell improvement performance for him uh, so let's repeat this the smaller bundle you have the higher the load speeds the higher the conversion and more money you raise basically it's more complicated than that I know but uh, this is just the core of it. So, and uh, okay, uh, let's uh, get a bit of deep dive in this. Uh, like, why do we care about this so much? Uh, in this image, uh, it, uh, it's compared uh, with uh, a loading of uh, J JPEG image with the JavaScript of approximately the same size. And it was tested on really, really slow internet with on a really, really old cell phone, but it just show the problem better. So we can see uh, that even though like network transmission of these files takes approximately the same time, uh, resource processing is differs a lot. So in what uh, concerns image in just a fraction of seconds this old device does image decoding and rasterizing paint and basically renders it on your screen whereas the javascript of the same size it in 170 kilobytes it's approximately nothing and these days on this old device it takes a significantly more time to parse and compile around two seconds in this case and also around two seconds just to execute this code so um next slide please okay so what should we do should we write less code no it's not an option for anyone uh this is how your uh, bundle typically looks all this green stuff is uh, uh, your dependency structure and just this little square in the bottom is your actually source code. Uh, can you please scroll down? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so for uh, half a kilobyte of bundle, it's only just a few of hundred bytes of source code. And uh, this is all because of uh, uh, This is all because of, oh, sorry, I think it's worked. Uh, this is all because of just a single line. Okay, sorry. Uh, presentations is complicated. <laughs> Okay. 
key. Uh, I am not going to tell, to tell you how it looks like, but this is how it feels like. Uh, the sun, the neutron star and black hole, and then the heaviest object in the universe is your bundle. And most of this is just because of this single line. Please uh, raise your hand if you ever written a line like this in your life. Okay, I see a lot of people does. And uh, now please raise your hand if you know what the problem is with this line. Uh, okay, I see a lot of educated people here. Uh, but I'm still going to tell you. Don't bother. So, famous quote says, theory is when you know everything but nothing works. So let's get a bit into the theory. And we'll start with a brief history of modules, why they were created, and what better way to do this than as comics. So just imagine a few files of code, just functions, blocks, like anything. And uh, in a JavaScript, by default, they need to coexist into a single environment, which makes uh, them interfere a lot with each other. And you have to be really careful if you're writing everything in a single environment because like variable duplication, like some uh, like process blocking, something like this, a, a lot of issues to handle. So uh, to resolve this, uh, a lot of developers use called something called IFE or immediately invoke function expressions, uh, which is basically just a plain JavaScript function that's called right after its declaration, and that's provide our code with uh, isolation because it provides additional context for all of our code. And uh, the problem with this uh, is uh, that uh, uh, there is no way for your code from different uh, functions to communicate. Of course, the uh, like the obvious uh, solution is to parse uh, your data in uh, some higher higher context. Uh, for instance, frameworks like jQuery does this. They just put everything in document or something like this. Uh, but uh, this might not be the case if uh, uh, there is other data over there. Like there is no guarantee that you wouldn't interact with the flow. Oops, sorry. Okay, so modules are typically just a way for like a breach into this isolation to so that your pieces of code can interact with data. Basically, this is it uh, for what module is. Uh, I hope it was fun, at least. And uh, But this is not everything I'm going to tell you today. So let's continue to history a bit more. This couldn't be drawn as a comic, I'm really sorry. So uh, yeah, as I mentioned, we originally started with immediately invoke functions and uh, they provided isolation and probably some custom context exchange was created, uh, but uh, history only dates this to the part where uh, it was standardized. And uh, the first and I think most important standard for this was uh, CommonJS. Ah, thank you. So CommonJS is a server-oriented module system implemented by Node.js. It's uh, synchronous, which means it slot all of its code at once. It, in the build time, it bundles everything first and then starts executing. And it's really convenient for server, but it doesn't work so well for frontend because we care about these bundles so much somehow. And this is why AMD was created. AMD stands for asynchronous module definition. It was implemented by RequireJS. Most people don't remember that. Or might even have never used this. And the main benefit of this, this was asynchronous. It means you could load your code only when you need it. So you could like split your code into separate bundles and so on. Uh, but it was kind of uncanny for developers to use. Uh, you can ask people who know about this. Uh, so there were another efforts created. For instance, uh, Browserify. Browserify was just an effort to bring common JS modules to browsers. Uh, and in order to clarify things a bit, uh, uh, 
UMD was created. Uh, UMD basically is universal module definition, which is common for browsers and servers. So you as a package developer wouldn't uh, have so much headache uh, whether to, to know like whether you going to ship your uh, module to browser users or to server users. You could just ship it in UMD. And uh, you might ask where in this system is ES modules and it's kind of a parallel universe because TS39 has created ECMAScript uh, as an alternative for standard for like everyone, for both for servers, for, for, for front end, for, I mean, for browsers and so on. And uh, it, as I said, it was released as a part of part of ES6, uh, which also known as ECMAScript 2015, and it was supported by, by Babel uh, Bundler. And uh, uh, yeah, let's get a, a deeper dive in this. This is how CommonJS looks like. If you've seen this code, I congratulate you, you already know what it is. So. What it looks like is uh, we use require function to uh, specify a module we need to use and then we save it into variable. And if we need to export something, we use module.export. And as I mentioned, uh, CommonJS is synchronous. Also, this is the only runtime that works in Node.js prior to version 19. Actually, uh, ES modules are supported from version 15, but they were under a feature flag until version 19, so we don't consider this a full support. And uh, CommonJS uh, doesn't provide enough metadata for a decent uh, tree shaking. And tree shaking is a dead, basically a dead code elimination. The systems statically analyze the code and decides which of it it needs to ship and which of it is unreachable. Uh, this is what CommonJS does under a hood. It just takes all your module and writes, wraps it into this uh, huge function, uh, which provides this with uh, required context, for instance, require function or this uh, module and so on. Uh, so on contrary, what we have in ES modules looks like this now. So you import some entities from your module name. And if you need to export, you just use word export. You can export anything like functions, variables, uh, uh, some just plain data objects. Uh, as there is a default export for like everything. And if uh, you need it, uh, ES modules can become asynchronous. This is how asynchronous import looks in ES modules, not so complicated. Also, it works in modern browsers natively. It creates a lot of metadata for tree shaken, for instance, or for other types of static analysis. And what's most important is that ES modules can actually import common just modules, which might be an issue, but we'll take a look at this later. Uh, and uh, this is uh, what ES modules uh, generate. Yeah, it, it just ships the same code it had previously. And uh, it also provides you with a lot of metadata, for instance, exported entries, uh, the imported entries, the module you request, the pass to this module. In this case, we have Lodash, and we can see that we use a local definition of uh, Lodash from node modules but it can al also be a URL or anything you need. So ES modules are so cool. Why does CommonJS still exist? Uh, CommonJS would come in handy for several cases, for instance, support for all browsers to which you can't ship uh, your ES modules directly, support for legacy code. Uh, if you use bundlers that doesn't support ES modules, uh, this is why they still produce packages in CommonJS. Uh, testing frameworks like Jest, Mocha, the older ones, only support CommonJS runtime. So yes, use vtest. And uh, next up is... Uh, come on. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, so 
you may say, bro, everything's too shakeable now. Why do I even need to hear this talk? And uh, we going to do a little quiz right now. Sorry, I don't really need this to work for this quiz. Okay. So please raise your hand if you think this line would tree shake well. Okay, I think I do. Okay, not a lot of people think it is, but it will. Uh, because Lodash AS is basically AS built for Lodash and uh, this tree shakes pretty well. Uh, next up, we have line like this. Would line like this tree shake well? What do you think? Please uh, raise your hand if you think it would. I am not actually raising the hand. I, I just showed you what you do. Uh, so it wouldn't uh, because uh, what we do here is we import the entire default export. Our system doesn't know what uh, exactly you will use, so it will bundle the whole Lodash build. And what about this line? Uh, isn't it the same as previous one, actually? Okay, so anyway, please raise your hand if you think this will tree shake well. Only one hand. Such a pity because this actually tree shakes so well. Uh, this uh, is a, a different expression than previously. And we will get a deep dive into this a bit later, probably. And last case, uh, will this tree shake well? What do you think? Uh, please raise your hand if you think it just. Okay, I see no hands at all right now. Uh, yeah, it will not because it uses Lodash, which is a, basically a common just build, and this doesn't tree shake so well. So, next part of this quote is theory is when you know everything but nothing works. Practice is when everything works but no one knows why. Not not this case, right? Uh, but anyway, we'll go a bit into practice of using modules. Um, Okay, so let's get back to Lodash. So Lodash uh, as author of its, uh, sorry. Uh, as author of Lodash states, it was built to provide a more consistent and cross environment iteration for arrays, functions, strings, function, and so on. And from its cross environment uh, nature, it supports AMD, it runs in Node.js and a lot of other stuff. It was, of course, built using uh, UMD, which, as we learned, is universal for everything. Uh, and uh, whenever you do something like this, it just brings uh, a whole Lodash into your code because it's basically a common JS runtime. It builds, it brings a whole of the Lodash, which is uh, 469 kilobytes uh, currently, but it may grow in the future, into your bundle. And uh, how we can avoid this is we can use ES build for Lodash, which is Lodash ES. Uh, and uh, uh, this is how to use it, or alternatively, you can use uh, uh, a custom build for, Lodash provides a custom build for each of its functions. So uh, this is, a, let's say, nature-friendly way to use Lodash. Uh, and uh, uh, if you're not sure about the library you're using, you can go to a site called Bundlephobia, uh, and you can type your uh, module name and version, and you'll be looking for this uh, tree shakeable sign over there. Wait, sorry, I can go far to show you where it is. Um, hope you found it. Uh, so next up, uh, I think, I think we missed a slide. Okay, so, no, it's, it's fine, thank you. Uh, so what to do if you're a package maintainer yourself and you want to use both CommonJS and ES modules uh, in your package so users don't bother as they do with Lodash. Uh, so what you can do is you can put uh, this uh, main value, uh, you can set up your index or your CommonJS build and modules and module key, you can set up your ES module build and also you can set up exports for both require 
and import functions to resolve properly, but uh, this is not officially supported by Node, so at some point this might stop working. Uh, so what uh, you should do instead, officially at least, is uh, you should uh, include browser fields. Uh, so in this case, for main and modules, you specify uh, common JS and ES modules bundles, and for browser, you specify browser version of the same common JS and ES modules bundles. Uh, this should work just fine. And if you want to turn ES modules in your node, it's pretty simple. You just set up type module in package.json, or alternatively, you can uh, use MGS exception and node uh, treats all MGS files as ES modules by default. You don't need to do this. This might come in handy if you're doing an isomorphic application, for instance. Uh, maybe, I don't know, whether no, uh, Next.js uses. And if you want to import ES module directly in your browser, uh, you can also do this. It's it's just a plain script with uh, type module. You can do imports inside of your browsers, which is kind of amazing to me. And also, uh, you should provide a script for uh, users who doesn't uh, have this uh, module, module type support in their browsers. And uh, what you also can do is you can set uh, a script of type import map, which uh, where you can defined your dependencies. Uh, in this case, we define Lodash as uh, ES build for Lodash, and we also defined a Lodash slash for ev if user ever uses like a uh, function package directly. Okay, so, uh, yeah, next slide, please. Uh, how can we automate this for our colleagues who haven't seen this talk just yet? Uh, what we can do is we can set up uh, the ESLint rule. Uh, uh, handy ESLint rule here is no restricted imports, and we can actually forbid to use. Uh, sorry, can you please go back? Uh, we can forbid to use Lodash at all uh, and write some friendly message, please use Lodash instead, or we can just uh, forbid to use a, use a default export from Lodash and only import the uh, function builds instead. And another another option here is uh, Babel plugins. Actually, this problem is so common, there is a specific Babel plugin for Lodash. I think it's called Lodash uh, Babel plugin. Uh, but in this case, I recommend you to use more uh, global plugin called uh, Transform Imports. It, it allows you to transform all your like Babel uh, member imports into Lodash slash this member. Uh, it's not so dev developer friendly, but it's okay. So as famous quote says, theory is when you know everything, but nothing works. And practice is when everything works, but no one knows why. In our laboratory, theory and practice are combined, nothing works, and no one knows why. And who said that? Does anyone know? Okay. Albert Einstein, of course. I, I don't know, I found this on uh, on internet. You can't trust any everything over there, but okay. Uh, let's go next slide. And uh, okay, things can go wrong for you. Even though you tried so hard, you replaced every Lodash instance in your project with Lodash AS, but you still see, see this ugly thing in your bundle. Uh, what can be the problem? The problem is that your dependencies might also use Lodash. So one thing is you can, of course, manually scroll through the package.json files and look for dependency or even for peer dependency, because uh, this would mean that library you, you are using also uses Lodash. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have to go deeper. And uh, they might use it on properly. And uh, another thing I can suggest is also Go into bundle for uh, Next slide, please. And you should scroll down to see if there is a composition section. And in this case, uh, we can see a polo client that consists of, uh, which bundles consist of a lot of other libraries. This may be the case for library you are using too. 
And uh, let's not forget that uh, modules like are not the only source of uh, your bundle growth. Um, another option might be, uh, can you please click, uh, is anything else, for instance, Babel picking too much polyfills for your projects. And this is a topic for another speech. I'm not going to talk about this today, so thank you very much. Uh, let's jump to conclusion, please. Uh, use modular, modular systems, look out for your dependencies and automate everything. Thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, any questions? Thank you very much. Okay, I see one question. Uh, maybe I missed it, but why did uh, the first uh, import uh, mm -hmm. uh, work? Okay. But yeah. the, or, or, I see you. Yeah. So whenever you do something like import, uh, then like name from module, what you do is you actually default, you, you import a default import from that module. And this is typically specified as an object that includes everything that has in this module. So in this case, uh, Tree shaking, tree shaking might not be provided enough metadata to know what uh, what is necessary and what is internal for this uh, object, and can this cannot be tree shaking effectively without like losing functionality because main thing for bundlers is to build your code but never to break it. This would be unacceptable. And in next case, when we use this wildcard operator, which is like star. Yeah. Uh, what we do is uh, we make uh, your transpiler collect everything that it thinks it's neat and then put in, into a variable next to S. So this is uh, yeah, strategic, strategic, strategically just a different type of import and the, the bundling of this ha happens on a different stage. So it's so it lets ES modules provide a lot more metadata for what you're using and what you're not. I see. Thank you. Thank you for the speech. Uh, so you mentioned there are two versions of Lodash. One is for uh, common JS modules and one is for ESM modules. Is that correct? It's, so, it's not specifically two versions. It's a different builds of the same version. Okay. Uh, but uh, Let's say we have a package that supports both ESM and common JS, JS exports. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we are in our application and we try to import uh, something from that package using, and our application is with, written with ESM modules, um, is there a way to tell which, um, which export will be used for, uh, for, for, for that library, for that package that we import from? So basically, mm -hmm. is is Node.js uh, smart enough to determine whether uh, we're using okay, we're using ESM module and we need to import with the, the ESM module, not use the uh, interoperability with common JS. Yeah, this works the next way. So if uh, ES modules on itself see that uh, the package they are importing provides metadata for ES modules it next considers that this is an ES module. And if it doesn't find uh, the corresponding metadata, it just uses, like falls back to common JS bundle, but then uh, your current module also become kind of a common JS bundle. So this is kind of tricky. Okay, thank you. And uh, I have another question about, you, you mentioned that there is an asynchronous way uh, of loading um, the ESM module. I, I would yeah. say it's probably more like a lazy loading, but uh, with the introduction of uh, global async in uh, the latest Node.js, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if it exists, but maybe you know that um, there is a way to use like a global await for, um, for imported modules. Yeah, it is, but uh, I think even in browsers, it's currently still under feature flag. Okay, no questions, right? Um, Daniel, thank you so much. I think we need to make like intense a round of applause because despite technical details, <laughs> yeah, you managed yeah, to do that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you.